Well, many thanks, uh, Wakaba. It is the last devolution conference for the pioneer governors and deputy governors, as well as the senators. And uh, just going down the line around the hierarchy in the devolution agenda. But today we did hear from the um, Kalonzo Musioka, who is the Wiper Party leader. He did make his remarks earlier in the day. He basically put out the agenda that um, devolution is the best gift Kenya has ever received. And of course, he did mention that um, there needs to be more um, tightening in terms of uh, spending and also allocations to the county government so that they can be able to execute their economic agendas, uh, Wakaba. So basically, that's what dominated today's uh, sessions. And of course, right now, a number of uh, panel discussions will be taking place from about 3 p.m. And um, right now, I'm standing by with the deputy governor for Nairobi County, and that is Jonathan Mweke, just to take stock of this conference, today being the second day, perhaps we'll be getting to hear from him in terms of um, what are some of the key striking policy pronouncements that uh, were actually made. Uh, we apologize for that. Uh, of course, um, this comes at a time when uh, counties have been on the receiving end when it comes to matters of spending. And um, thank you, Deputy Governor, for coming to the rescue there. <laughs> You're uh, welcome. Of course, um, let's just pick it up from um, today being uh, the second day. What do you make of um, the key speeches that came out? Yeah, Habi, it's great to be in your studios here uh, reporting live from Naivasha at our fourth devolution conference. Mm -hmm. uh, oops. Oh, sorry. This is... Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, in, the, in the way. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, today is International Women's Day. Yeah. So I'd like to wish all the Kenyan ladies a uh, happy International Women's Day. Yeah. Uh, it's time for the women of this nation now to be bold. And as leaders, we are going to empower them. We are going to protect them and we are going to celebrate our women because indeed they are the ones who give life. So sure. to all the ladies out there, uh, happy International Women's Day. All right. Uh, we've been discussing matters devolution. We've been discussing and uh, debating on how and whether devolution has changed and transformed lives yeah. in our counties. And uh, Abby, it seems like it really has. We've had a lot of success stories from several of the counties, yeah. from all the regions, actually, all in right. uh, the entire nation. Um, Wanainchi has been on the panels, and they have showcased on how devolution has touched mm -hmm. their lives in one way or another. All right. We've had uh, young people say how devolution has empowered them to be able to earn a living and start and maintain families. Uh, we've had uh, some of the women of this country mm -hmm. Uh, give kudos to devolution because yeah. in some areas like Wajir, uh, where a caesarean section was uh, was held for the first time, yeah. uh, that helped healthcare for women has come out. We've had uh, business ladies, Amamamboga, from right here in Naivasha, yeah. saying how the county government of Nakuru has mm -hmm. empowered her business to be able to grow, mm -hmm. and now she's able as a single mother to, pro to, uh, to produce right. and provide for her and her family. Okay. So devolution is working all over the place, yeah. and that's why uh, former Vice President His Excellency Kalonzo today said that indeed the biggest gift that this country has ever had is and has been devolution. All right. And uh, Mweke, you run one of the, uh, should I say, the richest counties in terms of uh, having a very well-established um, infrastructure and um, of course the people of Nairobi have been uh, banking on having a transformation in terms of yeah. um, lighting, housing, garbage collection, um, of course uh, automation of uh, key services that uh, the counties do offer. Of course devolution is about service delivery. How would you gauge Nairobi County in terms of uh, delivering on their mandate to the people of Nairobi? Yeah. Uh, Abby, first of all, uh, maybe I wish to use a different term and not the richest county, mm -hmm. maybe the most established uh, county. Oh, yes. Because another beauty of devolution is counties now in their own unique way mm -hmm. are beginning to come up with uh, uh, exploitation of their natural resources. Yeah. I mean, yes, Nairobi right now generates most of the revenue, uh, mm -hmm. more than any other county does. Actually, indeed, 50% of the entire revenue yeah. uh, that Nairobi gets is generated locally. No other county does that. 
but you have potential like a county like Turukana yeah. in which there is oil. Mm -hmm. You have a potential in a county like uh, Kitui in which there is coal. Yeah. You saw the other day in Kakamega there is gold and oh, diamonds. Yes. Yeah. So I think uh, devolution is, is, uh, is, is a good thing for this country. Mm -hmm. uh, but for Nairobi, uh, Nairobi is a unique county because Nairobi is very diverse. Yeah. Uh, all 42 communities from all corners of this country come into Nairobi to look for opportunities. Yeah. So uh, Dr. Kidero and I, the people who are elected and mandated yeah. to lead the capital city, we have to be very cognizant about the kind of people we are producing services to yeah. and the kind of people that we are building infrastructure for. Mm -hmm. uh, that is what our policies have generated around. All right. So we enable business a lot. Was that of course, people come in to look for, uh, to do business and look for opportunities. Yeah. What we've done is we've been able to streamline our business licensing process all through so that our businesses can be able to run yeah. and everybody has a level playing field to be able to do business. The mm -hmm. only thing that's required from the citizen is to work hard. Uh, number two, another big thing that we've done is in healthcare because for people to be able to work, they have to be healthy. So we've made several health centers 24-hour zones. All right. Actually, I was uh, mentioning yesterday when we were talking about some of the gains Nairobi has done, is that we see 20,000 people a day, yeah. uh, which means every minute we see uh, almost uh, 13 or 14 people every minute mm -hmm. uh, in Nairobi. And that's just to ensure that our people are healthy and they can be able to go to work and produce, and which in turn is able to take care of the economy. All right. Uh, last but not least, we've done a lot of work in infrastructure, our roads or bridges. Nairobi now is lit street lighting, which has helped a lot of security issues. Uh, and we've seen the county being able to grow uh, in terms of doubling the number of locally uh, generated revenues from 7 billion to 14 billion mm -hmm. because of some of these enablers that we are putting for people to be able to work, right. live, and uh, do business in Nairobi. Of course, uh, Nairobians have been saying that um, devolution in some respects hasn't uh, delivered the promise they as expected. For example, in Nairobi, parking fees went up, garbage collection is still a big challenge, and of course, um, corruption from the county as carries. What do you have to say about this? Well, uh, quite a bit, actually. We're the pioneers. Mm. Uh, devolution is a new thing. Kenyans about seven years ago made this choice that this is how they wanted to be governed. And we are the pioneer leaders. I'm the first deputy governor of Nairobi. Dr. Ivan Skidero is the first governor of Nairobi. Yeah. So we spent uh, the first few years putting in systems and really getting to learn how do these devolved units work. Of course, for us, it was unique that we had a petition, election petition that distracted us for the first year and a half. Uh, what has been a challenge for devolution, and Nairobi in particular, has been resourcing. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to note that before devolution, we used to get from the national government about 14.2, 13.2 billion shillings every year. We started off with 9 billion shillings. Now, then, before devolution, we had 7,000 employees. Uh, now, it came up to almost 12, 13,000 employees, so we almost doubled. So you're doubling the number of employees with less amount of resources. So that has been a challenge trying to juggle that and now prioritization on the same. Uh, that's why we had to increase some of the levies just to be able to keep the city afloat. All right. uh, the second thing that has really hurt us is the debt that the national government owes us. Uh, national government owes us 69 billion shillings. They don't pay their parking fees. Uh, they took a piece of land in Makasi that they never compensated the county for. Mm -hmm. They are late, some of the ministries are late in paying their land rates. And unless we get revenue from the county, then we can't provide the services. So under the circumstances, the amount of services we've been able to provide really uh, has seen the city progress from where it was yeah. to where it is now. Is there room for improvement? Absolutely. Okay. We need to focus on uh, revenue generation, uh, collecting debts. We urge the national government, actually the Senate, mm -hmm. is right now uh, petitioning the national government on our behalf to ensure that we can get paid that money so that we can use all that money in doing the things that are important to the people of Nairobi. For those who think devolution is not working for them, it's yeah. been uh, four years now since devolution came into place. Uh, right. The city had been in existence for about 50 years. We want to say that Rome was not built in one day. Mm -hmm. That's why you're actually asking for five more years to be able to complete some of the seven promises that we made. 
others are well underway and we don't want another administration to come in halfway and derail, right. derail the development agenda of the city. All right. Yeah. Well, um, of course, um, lots of discussions and lots of um, issues happening with the devolution. And um, right now we are seeing county governments have been uh, receiving close to 287 billion shillings that is coming from the national government, which is enshrined in the constitution, which demands that counties receive 15% of a revenue allocation. Of course, Wakaba, I can't uh, wrap up this interview without asking one of the key questions you really, really wanted to hear the deputy governors talk about. That is the question of continuity. And uh, Mweke, just make it brief. Um, in the eventuality that there's a change of the personalities running the county, what do you make of how do we ensure continuity where a new governor comes in, a new deputy governor, will we have a mechanism in place to ensure that um, they are able to live up to the promises as well as execute the ongoing projects? Yes, there's a transition uh, for county governments act right. that's currently in the Senate and that outlines very clearly how to transition from one county government to another. Uh, in terms of continuity, you know, for us in Nairobi, based again on the fabric of the city, uh, the governor and myself have run a very inclusive uh, county government. Right. So our leadership has been inclusive based. Mm -hmm. In terms of continuity, we've also agreed that we're going to run again together okay. in uh, the coming elections so that we can ensure that a lot of the things that Nairobians have been wanting to get done Indeed, our policies are based on public participation mm -hmm. can get uh, done throughout but through within the transition in case there's a transition from one government to another there's an act that's actually in the Senate that is going to outline how that happens all right yeah many thanks Jonathan thank you I'll be always nice and a pleasure to be with you thank you thank yeah. you very much that has been the deputy governor for Nairobi County Jonathan Mweke just talking on the sidelines of the fourth annual devolution conference and this is the last for the pioneer governors as the country heads to the elections in 2017 in August of course lots of people will be speaking to from this side of town Wakaba and uh, of course uh, we'll be giving you the latest updates from this side of town for now we cross back to Nairobi well indeed uh, thank you very